Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host, with another marvellous video. Good day, my fellow leaguers. Whenever our Earth has faced some of its worst crises, the top-tier DC Comics characters banded together to establish the Justice League in an effort to save it. In 1960, the plan was to compile all of DC's greatest Golden Age heroes into a single team, but this proved challenging because character development teams had complete control over how characters behaved. Led by the creative team of Gardner Fox, Mike Zukowski, Bernard Sachs, Joe G. Yeller, Murphy Anderson and Gaspar Saladino. The Justice League first teamed up in the pages of The Brave and the Bold, number 28, in March 1960, where they faced off against Starro, the Conqueror. Since then, the League has come forth innumerable times to save our world. There have been many formations of the League, namely Justice League of America, Justice League Europe, Justice League International, Justice League Dark, etc. Although the main seven superheroes in the League are considered to be Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Martian Manhunter, Green Lantern and Flash, many other heroes have worked with the different League formations over time. In today's video, we learn about every superhero who has ever worked alongside the League. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Batman Bruce Wayne, aka Batman, was created by writer-artist duo Bill Finger and Bob Kane. He made his first appearance in Detective Comics issue number 27 on March 30th, 1939. He was the son of billionaire philanthropist and doctor Thomas Wayne and his wife Martha. While coming back from the movie The Mark of Zorro, the three of them were faced by an armed thug named Joe Chill. He demanded Thomas's wallet and Martha's pearl necklace. When Thomas tried to resist, Joe shot both Thomas and Martha, killing them before making an escape. Bruce grew up with apathy for criminals in his heart, who he believed to be a cowardly and superstitious lot. He traveled great distances and trained under great martial artists and assassins, with only one desire in his heart, the desire to channel his anger to instill fear in the heart of the criminals. When he returned from his training, he immediately started investigating the criminal underworld in Gotham. Then one night, injured after a brawl with the police, he took an oath in front of his father's stone bust. Yes, father, I shall become a bat. After that, he became the watchful protector of Gotham, the scourge of criminals, the Dark Knight. Batman relies on his own scientific knowledge, detective skills, and physical prowess, rather than having any innate superhuman abilities. As a skilled scientist, Batman is able to exploit and adapt cutting-edge technologies thanks to his unending money and scientific expertise. Batman is considered to be one of the world's best detectives, if not the best criminal investigator and interrogator. Batman has frequently been referred to as having a mind of a genius, being among the finest martial artists in the DC universe and being the pinnacle of human physical fitness, and the best hand-to-hand -hand combatant in the DC universe. In Grant Morrison's Justice League run, he was referred to as the most dangerous man on Earth by none other than Superman. Not only in comics, Batman has left his footprints in television, films, and video games as well, and has one of the biggest fandoms in the world. Ben Affleck and Robert Pattinson play Batman's character in the DCEU currently. Fan favorite Michael Keaton is also set to appear in the role in the upcoming Flash movie. Superman. Clark Kent, aka Superman, was created by the legendary writer-artist duo Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster. They first introduced Superman as a bald, super-powered villain in their short story Reign of the Superman in 1932. Later, in 1934, they came back together to give him the origin of an alien from the planet Krypton, and Superman finally made his debut in Action Comics number 21 in June 1938. Superman was born with the birth name Kal-El on the planet Krypton. Just before Krypton was wiped out in a natural catastrophe, his parents sent him to Earth as a newborn in a tiny spacecraft. In the American countryside, close to the made-up city of Smallville, his ship crashed. Jonathan and Martha Kent, farmers, found him and took him in. They gave him the name Clark Kent. Clark gained a number of superhuman traits, including flight, superhuman strength, and indestructible skin. He chose to fight crime after considering the advice of his adoptive parents to use his talents for the sake of humanity. He dons a bright suit to defend his private life and battles crime under the moniker Superman. 
man. Clark later moved to Metropolis and worked as a reporter to keep his ears close to the ground in order to help people. As Earth's gravity is weaker, Superman is gifted with the power of flight. The yellow sun of this solar system charges his cells and gives him superhuman strength, and heat vision erupts from his eyes. But perhaps the best quality in Superman is his compassionate and loving nature for his fellow humankind. He is the archetype of a superhero, fighting for truth, justice, and a better tomorrow. His only weakness is a rock called Kryptonite from the planet Krypton. It can take away all of his powers and can kill him with radiation poisoning. He even sacrificed his life while fighting the unstoppable monster Doomsday to save Earth. Superman has so much cultural relevance that there is an array of movies, games, fashion lines, documentaries on him. In the story Doomsday Clock, he has been shown as the main driving force behind the entire DC metaverse. Whenever there is a crisis and there is danger to Superman, time is shifted or rewritten. And the story of Superman starts again, saving the universe from any crisis that has befallen. Even if he has the powers of a god, he likes to be the shy farmer boy that he was brought up to be. Superman has been portrayed by George Reeves and Christopher Reeve in the past, which were most popular amongst fans. The quintessential Superman of our age, Henry Cavill, has also returned to DC Extended Universe in the Black Adam movie. Wonder Woman. Don't lie! Screamed William Moulton Marston, and so was born the greatest female superhero, Diana Prince, also known as Wonder Woman. William Marston, the man who discovered the lie detector, created Wonder Woman in the year 1941 with artist Harry G. Peters. She first appeared in All Star Comics issue number 8. Marston gave her his discovery as her greatest weapon. It was the Lasso of Truth, also known as the Lasso of Hestia, which bound the wrongdoers to say only the truth and nothing but the truth. As the legend goes in the island of Themyscira, shrouded from the eyes of all men, Diana was molded from clay and bestowed with life by her mother, Queen Hippolyta, as an Amazonian. But with time it was revealed that she was the daughter of Zeus, the god of war, and the Queen Hippolyta. She left in a quest to stand up for the truth, fight for the weak, and protect the innocents. She stepped into our world armed with her bracelets of submission, her magical tiara, golden boots, and the lasso of truth, along with her shield and god-killer sword. She's gifted with invulnerability and in her course as a super hero, she also learns how to fly. She's also a fierce warrior, trained by the best fighters in the island of Amazon since childhood. Though she was an Amazon warrior, it was also her mission to spread the gospel of peace in the world of men. She is played by Gal Gadot in the live-action DC Extended Universe movies. Green skin and a sick-ass cape? Call me the Martian Manhunter. Martian Manhunter, or Jean Jeans, first appeared in the backup story The Strange Experiment of Dr. Ardell in Detective Comics issue number 225 in November 1955. He was created by Joseph Sumachin and illustrated by Joe Seta. He is a green-skinned humanoid from the now-dead planet Mars who is transported to Earth by a Dr. Saul Erdel built experimental teleportation beam. The Martian reveals to Ardell where he is from and pleads with Ardell to send him back. Dr. Ardell dies from the shock of the encounter, leaving Joe on stranded on Earth. While he waits for Martian technology to progress to a point where it can enable his rescue, he resolves to fight crime. He assumes the persona of John Jones, a detective in the made-up Middletown, USA. In this course, he encounters every superhero and learns from them. John's power levels have fluctuated over time. But during the Blackest Night storyline, it has been established that John is the strongest Superman. With his added abilities of telepathy and shape-changing abilities, he can pose as a being superior to Superman. He forms the conjoined mind of the League with his telepathy that helps the Leaguers to communicate via thoughts. His only weakness is pyrophobia, making fire the Martian's Achilles heel. He melts into a pool of writhing green plasma when exposed to fire because he loses the capacity to keep his physical shape. Let's dance! Green Lantern Green Lanterns are intergalactic law enforcers and protectors of peace across the DC Universe. During the golden age of comic books, Martin Nadell invented the original Green Lantern character, Alan Scott, who frequently used his magic ring to battle common criminals in Capital City and eventually Gotham City. Martin Nadell and Bill Finger co-wrote the first stories featuring Alan Scott. In 1959, John Broom and Gil Kane reimagined the character as Hal Jordan for the Silver Age of comic books and changed the character's backstory 
from fantasy to science fiction. Al made his first appearance in Showcase issue number 22 in October 1959. Guy Gardner, John Stewart, Simon Baz, Kyle Rayner, Jessica Cruz, and Joe Mully are additional famous Green Lanterns who have worked with the League. They use rings to battle evil and get a range of incredible abilities that stem from their creativity, bravery, and electromagnetic spectrum of emotional willpower. Their rings are powered by a power battery that the Green Lanterns keep in a pocket universe. The power battery in turn is powered by the central power battery of the planet Oa, the central base of operations of the GL core. The rings have the capacity to summon constructs, solid green objects that the Green Lantern may control telekinetically. These can take the form of anything the ring bearer can think of. Hal Jordan has demonstrated the capacity to create kryptonite radiation. The rings give their wearers the ability to travel over intergalactic distances quickly enough to effectively patrol the cosmos. They also eliminate the need to eat, sleep, and eliminate waste, enabling the wearer to survive in almost any environment. Almost every language spoken in the universe can be translated by the rings. Hal Jordan has been Green Lantern for Justice League for the longest tenure and is considered to be amongst the seven main members of the League. Ryan Reynolds portrayed the character of Hal Jordan in the movie Green Lantern. I'm gonna paint my logo on it. Flash Bartholomew Henry Barry Allen, aka The Flash, first ran into the panels of the comic book showcase issue number 4 in October 1956. He was created by writer-artist duo Robert Kanaya and Carmine Infantino. Forensic chemist Barry Allen had a bad reputation for being extremely sluggish and tardy, which always irritated his fiancée, Iris West. While working on a new case one night, Barry stayed up late at his lab. A lightning strike occurred, shattering a case full of unknown substances and dousing him in liquid, briefly knocking him unconscious. He was revived very soon. Alan eventually discovered that he'd equally improved reflexes, senses, and healing abilities in addition to being able to sprint at superhuman speeds. Later, he donned a red bodysuit with a lightning bolt on his chest. He started calling himself The Flash after the comic book character Jay Garrick from his youth and turned into Central City's resident costume guardian and protector. Barry is able to run at super speed by tapping into an other dimensional energy source known as Speed Force. Barry created the Cosmic Treadmill, using which he is able to manipulate space and time, and can time travel to the past as well as the future. He is also able to break the multiversal barriers and able to travel to any other world in the multiverse. Being faster than the speed of thought, he can change his ideas more quickly than regular thought. Barry is also immune to telepathic assaults and control. He can put a lot of knowledge into his short-term memory by speed reading, and it'll stay there just long enough for him to use it. In the movie Zack Snyder's Justice League, he's been shown to use his powers to completely turn back time and resurrect the already dead leaguers and the world. Fan favorite Grant Gustin plays Flash in the live-action CW series, and Ezra Miller portrays the character in the DC Extended Universe movies. Hawk Girl. Shara Hull, or Shara Thal, aka Hawk Girl, was first introduced in The Brave and the Bold issue number 34 in March 1961. She was created by writer artist duo Gardner Fox and Joe Cubitt. She was born on Thanagar, a technically advanced planet where crime was essentially non existent. As a young member of the Thanagarian police force, she was tasked with helping Katar Hull, the force's most distinguished officer, to apprehend the dragonfly robbers. Katar soon found himself attracted to her. They got married and fought Hawk World's criminals as superheroes Hawkman and Hawk Girl. Shea later joined her husband in the Justice League as Hawk Girl. As part of the League's vote to lift its previous 12-person cap, she was the first member to be accepted. A belt of Inth metal, a substance unique to the planet Thanagar, is what gives Hawk Girl her abilities. The metal possesses a variety of electromagnetic and gravitational properties in its base form and is psycho-reactive, responding to the thoughts of its carrier. It gives the Hawks the ability to fly, superhuman strength, extremely keen vision, and improved healing and regeneration capabilities. She also demonstrates expert hand-to-hand -hand combat abilities. She's learned how to fight for many lifetimes, much like Hawkman. Although she's been pictured with swords, axes, war hammers, shields, and other combat weapons, her favorite weapons are a spear and a mace. Her experience as the gunfighter Cinnamon has given her the prowess to shoot. Like other contemporary Thanagarians, she's able to fly, thanks to a pair of wings that grow from her back. Shaira has been a member of the Justice League in the acclaimed Justice League animated series, too. The king is risen. 
Aquaman Arthur Curry, aka Aquaman, was first introduced in More Fun Comics issue number 73 in November 1941. He was created by the writer-artist duo Paul Norris and Mort Weisinger. Although he was first represented as a son of an undersea adventurer in the Golden Age, his origin was retconned during the Silver Age. There, Arthur was the son of a lighthouse keeper Tom Curry and Atlanta, an outcast from Atlantis. Arthur learned as a child that he had several superhuman talents because of his ancestry, including the ability to communicate with aquatic creatures and swim incredibly well. At some point, Arthur made the decision to put his skills to use by taking on the role of Ocean Protector. While he was swashbuckling under his Aquaboy moniker, he met Superboy, which inspired him to become a superhero. He later took on the name of Aquaman. He was one of the founding members of the Justice League. The most well-known skill of Aquaman is his capacity to call sea life from a considerable distance and communicate with it. The majority of his abilities come from the fact that he's evolved to survive and thrive in the most hostile aquatic conditions. He has the the ability to breathe underwater, and a superhuman build that makes him resistant to machine gun fire and strikes from superhuman opponents. Like an average Atlantean, he can lift or push about two tons, hence routinely performing superhuman and Atlantean physical feats. Jason Momoa plays the character in the DC Extended Universe movies. Cyborg Victor Stone, aka Cyborg, made his first appearance in DC Comics Presents issue number 26. He was created by writer Marv Wolfman and artist George Perez. He was made a test subject for several intelligence enhancement studies by his scientist parents Silas Stone and Eleanor Stone. Victor eventually responded well to these therapies, and his IQ rose to genius levels as a result. When Victor visits his parents' lab to see interdimensional access studies being conducted, a grave mishap takes place. His mother was fatally slain by an angry gelatinous creature that was unintentionally pushed through the interdimensional portal at the time of his arrival. Victor was gravely hurt by its onslaught before his father was able to send it back to its original dimension. In order to save his life, his father fitted him with metallic prosthetic limbs and implants. Although saved, Victor had apathy toward his own appearance, but with time he used his newfound strength and abilities to serve and protect mankind and join the Teen Titans and later the Justice League. In DC's 2011 reboot of its comic book series, Cyborg was established to be a founding member of the Justice League. Victor Stone is known as a cyborg because a sizable chunk of his body has been replaced with cutting-edge mechanical components, giving him superhuman strength, speed, endurance, and flight. His heavily metallic, mechanically modified body is significantly more resilient than a typical human body. The internal computer system of a cyborg can communicate with other computers. Other characteristics include an electronic eye with superhuman-level visual replication. He can rearrange his robotic parts to create any weapon that he thinks of, most commonly a sonic cannon. The tech that he was revived with was later retconned to be Apocalyption. That gives him the ability to open boom tubes and travel anywhere. The character is portrayed by Ray Fisher in the DC Extended Universe movies. Captain Marvel, Shazam. Billy Batson, aka Captain Marvel, aka Shazam, made his first appearance in Wiz Comics issue number two in February 1940, published by Fawcett Comics. He was created by the writer artist duo Bill Parker and C.C. Beck. Although his backstory has been retconned over time, the most popular one was written by Jeff Johns in 2012. Billy Batson, a difficult 15 year old foster boy who had been in multiple foster families, is temperamental and troubled. While in Philadelphia, he received five new foster siblings at his most recent placement with foster parents Victor and Rosa Vasquez. They were den mother Mary Bromfield, con man and pickpocket Freddie Freeman, timid and shy Pedro P, intelligent Eugene Choi, and vivacious Darla Dudley. He was given his power by the wizard called Shazam of the Rock of Eternity, who was searching for champions. When faced by the villain Dr. Savannah, Billy turned into Captain Marvel by uttering the words Shazam and gave similar powers to his five new foster siblings, thus forming the new Shazam family. Billy gets fast access to a wealth of intellectual information thanks to the wisdom of Solomon. He has superhuman strength, equivalent to a mythical demigod, thanks to the might of Hercules. The resilience gained from using Atlas's stamina is almost infinite. He never feels worn out, so he doesn't need to rest or sleep. Along with enhancing Captain Marvel's five senses and other physical and mental talents, the might of Zeus also gives him resistance to all magic spells and attacks. It also powers the magic thunderbolt that turns him into Captain Marvel. His mental fortitude is enhanced by Achilles' courage, giving him 
some superhuman levels of inner strength, willpower, discipline, and will to call upon when all else fails. He can fly at supersonic speeds and move at superhuman speeds like Flash by channeling the speed of Mercury. He's sometimes depicted as more powerful than Superman himself because his powers are mainly derived from magic. Zachary Levi plays Shazam in the DC Extended Universe movies. Green Arrow Oliver Jonas Queen, aka Green Arrow, first appeared in More Fun Comics number 73 in November 1941. He was created by the writer-artist duo Mort Weisinger and designed by George Papp. He was introduced as a wealthy playboy who was a great combat artist and an archer. He dressed up as a superhero and fought crime alongside his partner Speedy in Star City and Seattle. While his backstory was inspired from that of Batman, his looks were influenced by the swashbuckling Robin Hood. Oliver mainly stands out as a master archer. He was a natural at archery and had been since he was a teenager. He is equally adept with the most basic bows, the most complex composite bows, and trick arrows. He's even demonstrated proficiency with an alien technology bow. He also uses a variety of trick arrows or speciality arrows for combat in a variety of unique circumstances. It includes adhesive, explosive tip, grappling hook, flash grenade, tear gas, boxing gloves, and even kryptonite arrows. He's a brilliant hand-to-hand -hand fighter and even defeated Deathstroke in a fight once. He made his live action debut in the fan hit series Arrow, where he was played by Stephen Amell. Hawkman Katar Hull, aka Hawkman, first appeared in The Brave and the Bold issue number 34 in March 1961. On his native planet of Thanagar, Katar Hull held the title of Imperial Prince. His father was the well-known inventor and ornithologist Padan Katar. Aliens known as the Manhawks invaded Thanagar when Katar Hull was 18 and started plundering the planet. Young Katar Hull was dispatched by Padan to penetrate their nest and report back on the aliens. Using this knowledge, Padan designed a battle armor that resembled a hawk and contained cutting-edge technology made from earth metal. The Manhawks were driven from Thanagar by Katar using this hawk suit and Paran's cutting-edge weapons. He then started heading the hawk police as Hawkman. There he met and fell in love with Hawk Girl in the quest to find the shape-changer Bythe. Both of them came to Earth, and later on they joined forces with the Justice League to protect Earth. Hawkman was able to fly thanks to the earth metal or earth metal. His belt, boots, and wings are all made of metal. It can be mentally regulated by Katar. He can control his flight with his wings, which can be flapped with shoulders movements. He has superhuman physical strength. Hawkman generally favored the employment of ancient weapons over contemporary or future ones, especially maces, nets, spears, and shields. He's brilliantly skilled at using them rather than modern weapons. This is because he has the memories of having used these weapons through many previous lives. The employment of Thanagarian weapons in Qatar Hull situation was too risky because of the high likelihood that they would be misplaced, seized, and later utilized or replicated on Earth. Aldous Hodge starred as Hawkman in this cinematic debut in the DC Extended Universe film Black Adam in 2022. I heard him, ma'am. Not gonna happen. Captain Atom Captain Atom first appeared in Space Adventures issue number 33 in March 1960 in Charlton Comics. In that continuity, he was a scientist named Alan Adam. He faced a nuclear accident in which his body was shredded into atoms. When he reformed again, he was a nuclear-powered superhero. His character was acquired by DC Comics in the 1980s, and his origins were retconned. Here, he was an Air Force pilot known as Nathaniel Adam. He was subjected to a number of nuclear experiments, which decimated his body into atoms. Later, he reappeared as the superhero Captain Atom. Captain Atom's metallic skin is made of dilustel, which actually acts as a container for the immense amount of nuclear energy that's contained within him. The skin is linked to the quantum field and allows him to take in and manipulate infinite amounts of energy with his willpower. He's able to fly and shoot nuclear power bolts from his hands. He's able to create force fields to shield himself from attacks. He has detonated several times in comics, much like a nuclear bomb destroying everything in the vicinity. With the amount of energy that he absorbs, he's able to move forward or backward in time. Black Canary The Black Canary was created by writer-artist duo Robert Kanaya and Carmine Infantino and made her first appearance in Flash Comics issue number 86 in August 1947. The moniker was taken at first by Dinah Drake and then her daughter, Dinah Laurel Lawrence. Dinah Drake was trained by her father, Detective Richard Drake, to hone her powers of sonic scream, which came from a genetic mutation. After Richard Drake dies, Dinah takes up the mantle of Black Canary and becomes a crime fighter in Gotham. She gets married to Private Eye, Larry Lance, and has 
has a daughter whom she names Dinah. Dinah inherited the power of a sonic scream from her mother. When the first Black Canary passed, her daughter Dinah took over her mantle and continued her quest as a superhero. She later worked alongside the superhero team Birds of Prey and also helped the Justice League as a reserve. Black Canary is a brilliant martial artist and hand-to-hand -hand combatant. She's helmed on par with Lady Shiva, Wonder Woman, and even Batman as far as bare-handed combat goes. She has the power of the sonic canary cry that can disassemble her opponents and incapacitate anyone in her way. The cry is known to shatter rocks and break metals. She's also an expert gymnast and motorcyclist. The character made her debut in the 2020 movie Birds of Prey and was played by Journey Smollett. Satana. Satana Zatara made her debut in Hawkman issue number 4 in November 1964. She was created by writer-artist duo Gardner Fox and Murphy Anderson. Like her father Zatara, Satana is a stage magician who also possesses mystic abilities. Being a member of the Homo Magi species, Zatana possesses the genetic ability to use magic and has mastery over both mystical and cosmic forces thought to be as old as the universe. She has an infinite number of spells under her belt, making her one of the most powerful magicians in the DC universe. Because of her abilities, she has been given the titles Mistress of Magic and Sorceress Supreme. She employs Logomancy, where she speaks spells backwards to produce a range of magical effects, including teleportation, healing, the ability to influence other people's minds, and more. She has the artifacts Talisman of Atlantis and Demonography at her disposal to help her fight her occult opponents. Ostium Abert. You here. Hello, ladies. John Constantine. John Constantine, aka Hellblazer, made his debut appearance in Swamp Thing issue number 37 in June 1985. He was created by Alan Moore, Stephen R. Bissett, Rick Veitch, and John Tuttleman. Depicted as a working class warlock, occult investigator, and con artist, Constantine is based in London. He's well known for his never ending cynicism, deadpan humor, ingenious scheme and incessant chain-smoking, but he's also a passionate humanitarian who's motivated by a sincere desire to make a difference in the world. He started off as a side character, but rose to the rank of IGN's 29 Top 100 Comic Book Heroes. Despite having some expertise in other fields like necromancy and spiritual communication, Constantine's main areas of focus include demonology, demonic summoning, illusions, and divination. When using sorcery, Constantine is equipped with the knowledge of many magical spells, rituals, and curses, including evocation, necromancy, illusions, invisibility, and can even use magic to travel through time. The House of Mystery works as his means of transportation to many cosmological realms. John also travels with a collection of potent magical objects, including his signature trench coat, which is endowed with strong demonic abilities. Additionally, it's revealed that John possesses magical abilities like teleportation, counterspells, elemental magic, telekinesis, and immobilization. Dr. Fate. The Dr. Fate moniker has been used by many characters, but the most iconic ones are Kent Nelson and Khalid Nasur. Kent Nelson made his first appearance in More Fun Comics issue number 55 in May 1940 and was created by Gardner Fox and Howard Sherman. While in an archaeological expedition with his father, Nelson accidentally awakens Naboo, the cosmic lord of order, and kills his father in the process. In response to the tragedy, Naboo shows compassion for the youngster and trains him to be a lords of order agent. Nelson eventually turns into a crime fighter and the top protector of Earth from supernatural dangers. Later, ancient Egyptian gods and angels chose Kent Nelson's grandnephew Khalid Nasur to take over as Dr. Fate. He's one of the greatest sorcerers in the DC multiverse. The Helmet of Fate, made out of nth metal, gives him access to an infinite number of spells that allows him to fight, heal, and manipulate Earth, water, air, fire, and lightning. The Amulet of Anubis gives him a psionic shield and protects him from any telepathic attack. It helps him to communicate with spirits. The Cloak of Destiny protects him from any kind of magical attack. The Orb of Naboo helps him to search for unknown threats and the Staff of Power helps him to project energy. Atom. Raymond Ray Palmer, aka The Atom, first appeared in Showcase issue number 34 in October 1961. A physicist and professor at Ivy University, Ray specializes in matter compression as a way to combat overpopulation, famine, 
and other global issues. He found a piece of a white dwarf star when it crash landed on Earth. Using that, Palmer made a lens that enables him to shrink anything to any size he wants. He later embeds the same tech in his belt and is able to shrink himself to the size of an atom. The atom is capable of shrinking to the subatomic level while maintaining its innate strength. His powers have to first be controlled by the belt, then by hand motions and finally by mental orders that were synced directly with his brain. He has complete molecular control over his body, like Plastic Man. He's able to write phone lines to his destination by calling a number and riding through the handset. He can shrink down beyond the subatomic scale in order to roam the multiverse by slipping below the quantum layer beneath reality. Lobo. In June 1983's Omega Man issue number 3, Lobo made his debut in DC Comics. He was conceived by Keith Giffen and Roger Slifer. He was created as a satire on the tough guys from the 1990s. He often breaches the fourth wall and addresses the audience directly by referring to himself as the main man. He never breaks the terms of the contract once he accepts a bounty. He hero worships the actor Dolph Lundgren. He solely enjoys hunting, killing, and drinking, although he's fiercely protective of space dolphins. He enjoys taking revenge on behalf of the space dolphins that perished in the conflict. Lobo is an immortal being. Given time, he can regenerate from a single drop of blood. He's still alive after being killed and decapitated multiple times over the years. He possesses superhuman strength, durability, agility, and can survive without oxygen in space. He is an expert marksman and has been an enemy as well as an ally of the Justice League. He was played by Emmett J. Scanlon in the live-action TV series Krypton. Phantom Stranger The Phantom Stranger made his first appearance in Phantom Stranger issue number one during August-September 1952. He was created by writer-artist duo John Broom and Carmine Infantino. Very little is known about who he is or where he's from. During Trinity Crisis, it was shown that he's actually Judas, the man who betrayed Jesus for 13 pieces of silver. He has been cursed ever since with the duty of helping others and stopping impending dooms. He's well known for serving as a paranormal helper to other heroes, such as the Justice League. Superman proclaimed the stranger a member without condition. However, the stranger fled before accepting. The Phantom Stranger's most notable and powerful ability is his enigmatic omniscience. He appears to know almost everything about any person or circumstance he comes across in the DC Universe, as well as the Marvel Universe. This makes it possible for him to help and guide others. He has the ability to destroy magic, reveal illusions, travel through time, and fire powerful energy bolts. He can survive in space without the use of any form of of life support. He can also travel great distances, which includes Apocalypse, Hell, and Heaven. The character made his first TV appearance in the Swamp Thing TV series and was played by Macon Blair. Firestorm Firestorm was created by Jerry Conway and Al Milgram. He made his first appearance in Firestorm, The Nuclear Man, issue number one in March 1978. Ronnie Raymond, a high school student, and Martin Stein, a physicist who won the Nobel Prize, were both involved in an accident that allowed them to combine into Firestorm, The Nuclear Man. Due to Stein's unconsciousness at the time of the accident, Raymond was clearly in charge of the Firestorm form. Stein served as Raymond's inner voice of reason. He gave Raymond suggestions on how to employ their talents but he didn't actually have any control on their dual forms. Their exploits were known for the friendly banter between the two. Firestorm can rearrange the molecular or particle structure of any matter into almost anything else, producing new atomic structures with the same mass. He has the power to alter an object's shape or form as well as its fundamental makeup, such as turning lead into gold. Firestorm can only create objects whose inner workings are known to the Firestorm Matrix, referred to as the driver. He can also use the energy of the Matrix to create more advanced sentient constructions. Firestorm can fly at supersonic speeds and attain escape velocities. He can also pull and enlarge others from the subatomic universe at will, changing the size of their own body. Blue Beetle The Blue Beetle made his first appearance in Charlton Comics in Mystery Man Comics issue number 1 in August 1939. He was created by Charles Nicholas Wyszkowski. The first Blue Beetle was Dan Garrett, who got his powers from a sacred scarab, Kaji Da. The character was later taken over by DC. There, while fighting Jarvis and his evil army, 
Dan was killed. His student, Ted Cord, takes up his mantle and scarab. Ted has worked with the League ever since until he was abducted by the sinister Maxwell Lord and was shot in the head and killed. Later, the scarab fuses with the teenager, Jamie Reyes, and he becomes the new Blue Beetle. Ted Cord studied the scarab and created a lot of technological gadgets with its help, but he didn't really tap into its superpower. When the scarab fused with Jamie, it gave him multiple abilities. He's covered in the Blue Beetle armor that he can morph at will. He's able to create weapons just by thinking about them. He's bestowed with a scarab sight to scan people. He can hack into any technology. His armor also heals him faster. Sholo Mariduena will be playing the character in the upcoming Blue Beetle movie. Red Tornado Red Tornado was created by writer Gardner Fox and artist Dick Dillon and debuted in Justice League of America issue number 64 in August 1968. Red Tornado is a conscious android which is able to rotate his body parts in such manners that it generates winds at tornado speed. These winds help him in flight and in dispersing his opponents. The sentience of the tornado champion from Ran merged with Red Tornado's android body which was created by villainous scientist T.O. Morrow. It instilled life into his android body. He started off as a member of the Justice Society initially, but then time traveled and joined the Justice League. Later, in the post-crisis era, his origin was retconned and he was made an air elemental created by Earth spirit Maya to protect the environment. He possesses the strength and durability of a superhuman thanks to his android body. He can survive in space as well as under the sea. He has human consciousness and emotions and has AI attributes as well. He can generate wind at a speed of a Category 5 hurricane. In recent years, his android body has been injected with nanotechnology. This helps him morph his appearance into a human and touch and feel like a human does. Red Tornado was played by Ido Goldberg in the live-action Supergirl series. Dick Grayson, Nightwing Dick Grayson, aka Nightwing, made his first appearance in Tales of the Teen Titans issue number 44 in July 1984. He was created by Marv Wolfman and George Perez. Dick Grayson used to fight alongside Batman under the moniker of Robin. There was a falling out between Dick and Batman because Joker shot him. Batman removed him from the mantle of Robin. He decided to move on from the shadow of the Bat and be a man for himself. Dick Grayson mused briefly about his new role after giving up the Robin guys. Superman tells him a story of an ancient Kryptonian who, after being expelled from his family, opted to become a vigilante known as Nightwing and fight crime. Dick Grayson adopts the name for himself and becomes a crime fighter. Nightwing gained the rank of number one sexiest male character in comics by Comics Alliance. He was a trained acrobat to begin with, and as Robin, underwent a rigorous and extensive training program under Batman. As a result, he now has a nearly ideal physical shape for fighting crime. He is a master tactician. He's also able to speak in multiple languages. He's a master detective and a master of disguise. Since he's been trained by Batman, he's one of the fiercest martial artists on Earth. The main superpower that he possesses is perhaps compassion and leadership. He's known to have a very simple, happy and wise soul and generally keeps his smiling face on, even in the face of danger. Nightwing is portrayed by Brenton Thwaites in the live-action series Titans. <laughs> Starfire Princess Coriander, aka Starfire, debuted in DC Comics Presents issue number 26 in October 1980. She was created by Marv Wolfman and the late George Perez. Princess Coriander was the next in line to become Planet Tamaran's queen. Her older sister, Commander, also known as Blackfire, became fiercely competitive with her after contracting an illness as a baby. She lost her claim to the throne as she was rendered incapable of harnessing solar energy to fly due to the disease. Commander attempted to murder her sister as they were practicing their dueling techniques with the warlords of Okara. Commando was kicked out as a result, and she vowed revenge. When Commando attacked, Coriander stole a spaceship and traveled to Earth, where she met the first Robin and the Teen Titans. She joined this team as a founding member and remained a member for many years, adopting the name Coriander's to secure modeling jobs. She develops a love interest with Robin later. Because Starfire is a Tomoranian, her body is built to constantly absorb UV radiation. This gives her the energy to boost herself into supersonic flight. Starfire can move quickly enough to cross numerous solar systems in a matter of minutes or seconds. She also has extraordinary superhuman strength and durability because of this energy. Starfire later acquired the ability to discharge her absorbed energy into extraordinarily potent blasts known as Star Bolts. Starfire is played by Anna Diop in the live-action series Titans.
Donna Troy. Donna Troy, aka Wonder Girl, first debuted in The Brave and the Bold issue number 60 in July 1965. She was created by writer artist duo Bob Haney and Bruno Primiani. She was trained in the Amazon and was one of the founding members of the Teen Titans team. She helped the team as one of Earth's protectors. Dorothy Hinckley, an unmarried teen who was dying, was Donna's birth mother and had given her up for adoption. Faye Stacy, Donna's adoptive mother, was unable to care for the toddler due to growing bills after Carl Stacy, Donna's adoptive father, was killed in a work-related accident and died. However, Donna was a victim of a child-selling ring that resulted in the deaths of the ringleaders in a furnace explosion. Robin assisted Donna in reuniting with Faye, who had later married in life. Donna was bestowed with superpowers by the mythical Amazonian Purple Ray. She's got superhuman strength, speed, and agility. Donna, like all Amazonians, is extraordinarily skilled with a variety of weapons and martial arts. Donna had a lasso of her own, the lasso of persuasion. It had a blue glow and was incredibly strong. Additionally, if Donna's willpower was stronger than anybody else's within its boundaries, then it had the power to make others behave as she pleased. She's played by Connor Leslie in the live-action series Titans. So Elongated Man Randolph Ralph Dibney, aka Elongated Man, first debuted in The Flash, issue number 112, in February 25th, 1960. He was created by writer-artist duo John Broom and Carmine Infantino. Ralph Dibney was enthralled by contortionists as a teenager. They were people who performed feats of flexibility. He discovered that all the bodybenders he spoke to drank gin gold a well-known soda. Ralph started studying chemistry and created a highly concentrated extract of the exotic Yucatan Jingo fruit, which gave him the power of elasticity. He later became friends with all the JSA and JLA members and helped them frequently in their adventures. He's a metahuman, and the Jingo Alexia interfered with his dormant DNA, as was shown later in the comics. An elongated man is able to extend his body and limbs to superhuman lengths and widths. He has increased agility thanks to these stretching abilities, which also allow for flexibility and coordination that go beyond what the human body is naturally capable of. He has the ability to bend his body into shapes and sizes that are not feasible for regular people. In addition to his stretching powers, Elongated Man is a strong deductive thinker and a professional detective. He's frequently regarded as one of the DC Universe's most knowledgeable detectives, on par with Batman. Whenever he senses a mystery, he has his famous nose twitch. He was played by Hartley Sawyer in the live-action Flash series. Power Girl. Power Girl, aka Kara Zor-El, and Karen Starr made her debut in All-Star Comics issue number 58 in January 1976. She was created by Jerry Conway, Rick Estrada, and Wally Wood. Power Girl is the cousin of Superman, although she comes from a different universe in the DC multiverse. She was originally from Earth 2, the world that was intended to be the setting for DC's wartime heroes as they appeared in 1940s comic books. She was eventually brought to the main DC universe after the crisis on infinite Earths and meet Superman and her own counterpart, Supergirl, there. Power Girl, being a relative of Superman, possesses all the traditional Kryptonian abilities, including super strength, flight, super speed, invulnerability, X-ray, telescopic, microscopic, and heat vision, freeze breath, and super hearing. Kryptonite has no effect on her because she's from an alternate pre-Crisis Earth 2, but she is still susceptible to magic. She's a successful businesswoman under the name Karen Starr, and as per Mr. Terrific, she is a top-notch scientist. Tim Drake Timothy Jackson Tim Drake, aka Robin, made his first appearance in Batman issue number 436 in August 1989. He was the third person to take over the moniker of Robin. Tim was in the crowd when Dick Grayson's parents were killed when he was a young boy. Tim eventually learned who Batman and the first Robin were, thanks to their exploits. Tim made an effort to persuade Dick to take up the role of Robin again. He did this because after the death of the second Robin, Jason Todd, he saw Batman descend into darkness. Tim claimed that Batman needs a Robin. However, Robin refused. Then, in an attempt to save Batman from the Scarecrow, he wears Dick's costume and appears as Robin. Since then, he's taken up crime fighting alongside Batman as the new Robin. Tim possesses no superpowers. Tim Drake received tutelage from a variety of instructors, including Batman, Nightwing, Henry Ducard, Cassandra Kane, and Lady Shiva, before becoming Robin. He uses a mix of his technological prowess, analytical talents, and martial arts in crime fighting. He's considered a technological wizard in the 
the Bat family. He's a genius with an IQ of 142. Ras al Ghul has praised him for his intelligence. Once Ras addressed him as detective, the same way he addresses Batman. Jay Lysergo portrays Tim Drake in the live action series Titans. Barbara Gordon, Oracle. Barbara Gordon, aka Batgirl, aka Oracle, first appeared in Detective Comics issue number 359 in January 1967. She was created by the team of Batman 67 television producer William Dozier, editor Julia Schwartz, writer Gardner Fox, and artist Carmine Infantino. Barbara Gordon, the sister of James Gordon Jr. and the daughter of Gotham City Police Commissioner James Gordon, began her career as the director of the city's public library. She became inspired by Batman's war on crime in Gotham City. So she trains herself and decides to do the same by dressing up as a bat and taking up the name Batgirl. But the Joker attacked the Gordons and shot her through the spine. After that, Barbara was bound to a wheelchair and could never walk again. She has genius-level intelligence, a photographic memory, an in-depth understanding of computers and electronics, skilled hacking skills, and graduate-level expertise in library sciences. All of these talents are increasingly important in a world that is focused on technology and information. She had a dream one night in which she was confronted by an all-knowing lady who resembled the Oracle of Delphi from Greek mythology. As a result, she chose Oracle as her pseudonym. She acts as a conduit for information, acquiring and distributing it to law enforcement agencies and those involved in the superhero culture. She received training with Richard Dragon, one of DC's top martial artists, to learn how to fight while in a wheelchair using a screamer. With both guns and batarangs, she has honed her upper body strength and targeting abilities. She's portrayed by Savannah Welch in the live-action Titan show. Beast Boy Garfield Mark Logan, aka Beast Boy, aka Changeling, first debuted in the Doom Patrol at issue number 99 in November 1965. He was created by the writer-artist duo Arnold Drake and Bob Brown. Garfield Logan was raised in Africa by his scientist parents who were working on reverse evolution to bring back extinct species. There, Garfield was fatally affected by the rare ailment Sakusha, but the disease didn't affect the species of West African green monkey. His father experimented on him with a serum developed from the genes of the green monkey in order to save him. The serum's unforeseen effects included permanently changing his skin, eyes, and hair green, as well as giving him the ability to transform into whatever animal he wanted. Beast Boy has the power to change into any animal that he has either seen in real life or in artwork. It can range from ant to dinosaur. His powers enable him to recover quickly from injuries, such as gunshot wounds, burns, and broken bones. In some storylines, he also sprouts out new limbs. Garfield is portrayed by Ryan Potter in the live-action show Titans. Raven Raven made her first appearance in DC Comics Presents issue number 26 in October 1980. She was created by writer-artist duo Marv Wolfman and George Perez. Raven was born as a Cambian to her demon father Trigon and human mother Arella who once took a part in a demonic ritual. Raven initially requested assistance from the Justice League to defeat Trigon, but they declined her request on the advice of Zatanna, who recognized Raven's demonic ancestry. She then turned to the Teen Titans for help. The Titans helped her, and she became an integral part of the Titans family. Raven is a strong empath who has control of her soul self. Her soul can levitate away from her body and fight and serve as Raven's eyes and ears. She is the most powerful offspring of Trigon. If left unchecked, her powers are claimed to be powerful enough to destroy the cosmos. She has telepathic insight into other people's brains and the ability to read and control their emotions. She can also promote serenity, stifle negativity, and even inspire romantic feelings in others. She may cause an injured person to heal quickly by taking their suffering within herself. She's portrayed by Tegan Croft in the live-action Titans show. Metamorpho. Rex Mason, aka Metamorpho, debuted in The Brave and the Bold issue number 57 in January 1965. He was created by writer artist duo Bob Haney and Ramona Fredo. Simon Stagg, the CEO of Stagg Enterprises, hires adventurer Rex Mason to find the Orb of Ra, a priceless Egyptian relic. He discovers Mason has been courting his daughter, Sapphire Stagg, soon after, employing him. This and other events start to strengthen Stagg's animosity toward Mason, which eventually results in a murderous scheme. Mason was knocked unconscious 
unconscious and left for dead inside a pyramid. He came into contact with the radioactive meteorite that was used to create the orb of Ra. Mason becomes Metamorpho, the element man, due to a massive flare-up of the meteorite's radiation. He gains the capacity to transform into any component of or combination of components found in the human body. He was one of the founding members of the Justice League. Metamorpho has the power to transform his body into a vast range of other elemental compounds and shape it into whichever he pleases. He has the ability to change the sizes and textures of these components and mix them to create intricate composites. He can exist in the states of gas, liquid, or solid. He has innate body armor due to the nature of his physique, which protects him from energy and blunt blows. You spoiled, rich little twerp. I think he means me. Red Arrow Roy Harper, aka Speedy, aka Arsenal, aka Red Arrow, made his debut as Green Arrow sidekick in More Fun Comics issue number 73 in November 1941. He was created by writer-artist duo Mort Weisinger and George Papp. When Roy's father died, he was taken in and raised by Brave Bo, the Navajo chief. When Bo fell critically ill, he asked Green Arrow to adopt and train Roy. Roy then became Green Arrow sidekick Speedy. He was one of the founding members of Teen Titans. When the Titans broke up, Roy developed a heroin addiction due to depression. He fought the addiction through and came back stronger with the Titans, calling himself Arsenal. In the dystopian reality of Kingdom Come, it's been shown that he fights alongside the Justice League under the name Red Arrow. Roy is not a superhuman. Green Arrow acknowledged that Roy outperformed him, as Roy is a master with a bow and arrow and a variety of other weapons. Additionally, he's skilled in the martial art of Mu Jigong, which is a subset of Hua Rangdo, can use almost any object as a weapon in battle. Because of his work as a spy for the CBI and Checkmate, Roy is an expert in espionage. He was played by Colton Haynes on the Arrowverse television series Arrow. Mr. Miracle Scott Free, aka Mr. Miracle, debuted in Mr. Miracle issue number one in April 1971. He was created by the legendary Jack Kirby. Scott Free's biological father, High Father Isaiah, was the head of New Genesis. He consented to an exchange of offspring with his adversary Darkseid as part of a diplomatic treaty. This move was to halt a deadly war with the planet Apocalypse. He accepted his enemy's son, Orion, and gave Scott Free into his enemy's care. Granny Goodness, a cruel Darkseid henchwoman who oversaw the inhuman training of Darkseid, size warriors for years, raised Scott Free. Scott had a natural ability to get out of insurmountable obstacles. Himon, a troublemaker who Darkseid's armies failed to capture, helped Scott develop his talent and his love of freedom. Scott maintained his innocence and hoped in the midst of such gloom by refusing to become hardened by the planet's terrible mistreatment. He fell in love with Big Bada, the leader of Granny's female Furies team. They planned together and escaped from Apocalypse to Earth. Being a new god, Scott is immortal. He has superhuman strength and durability. He's imbued with alpha energy, which helps him to travel through time and space. He is a master escape artist with a genius level intellect. He has a mother box at his disposal that enables him to open boom tubes and heal from injuries. He has his aero discs that help him to fly. Black Lightning Jefferson Pierce, aka Black Lightning, first appeared in Black Lightning issue number one in April 1977. He was created by writer artist duo Tony Isabella and Trevor Von Eden. Pierce was a school teacher from the violent suicide slum section of Metropolis. He gained electrical superpowers from a cutting edge power belt and used them to fight crime in his community. Later, Pierce stopped using his belt as his metagene was activated and he could generate electricity from his body. He worked closely with Batman and helped bring the Outsiders team together. He is electrokinetic and is able to generate and manipulate electricity. He possesses superhuman strength and durability. He's able to manipulate electromagnetic waves and thus has limited telekinesis. He's able to heal himself with his powers. He's also shown to be an Olympic level decathlete and a brilliant hand-to-hand -hand combatant. Kid Flash Kid Flash was the moniker taken up by three superheroes in the DC Universe. First was Wally West, who appeared as a sidekick of Barry Allen's Flash in The Flash issue number 110 in 1959. He was created by John Broom and Carmine Infantino. When Barry Allen sacrificed himself during the Crisis on Infinite Earths, Wally took up the mantle of Flash and became a member of the Justice League. Later, Barry's grandson, Bart Allen, traveled from the future to this timeline and functioned as the superhero Impulse. 
he met with the Teen Titans and took up the mantle of Kid Flash during a battle with Deathstroke. Later, during the New 52 era, Wally's cousin Wallace West was shown taking up the mantle. Wally has been the longest member of the Justice League until Barry Allen returned. Wally's primary superpower is his control over how quickly his body vibrates, as well as his ability to move and think quickly. He primarily uses this talent to run at extremely high speeds. He has a direct connection to the extra-dimensional Speed Force, which can't be cut off. He can create costumes out of Speed Force. He doesn't need the cosmic treadmill to travel through time. He can run at super speed and time travel. He's so fast that he can run faster than teleportation, reaching trans-time velocity. He even outran death and the gravitational pull of a black hole. While other Flashes sometimes get lost in the Speed Force, Wally can enter and exit the Force as per his will. The Wallace West version of Kid Flash is placed by Kynan Lonsdale in the Flash TV series. Miss Martian. Gan Moores, aka Megan Morse, aka Miss Martian, first debuted in Teen Titans issue number 37 in 2006. She was created by writer Jeff Johns and artist Tony S. Daniel. In order to flee the civil conflict between the green and white Martians, Ngan was sent by rocket from Mars to the Vega system. How or when she came to Earth is still not revealed. Ngan is actually a white Martian. In the year that followed the events of the Infinite Crisis, she participated as a member of the Teen Titans. She shortened her name to Megan Morse for use on on Earth. Like Martian Manhunter, Miss Martian is a shapeshifter, a telepath, and a telekinetic. She possesses superhuman strength and endurance on par with Kryptonians. She is indestructible and has demonstrated the ability to fend off assaults from opponents like Despero. She can increase her density to be immune to attacks. She is also capable of surviving in space. She can shoot energy beams from her eyes. She also has a stronger perception of her surroundings due to the nine senses of Martians. She was played by Sharon Leal in the live-action Supergirl series. Mr. Gold. Oh, I got one. I just flipped back. Booster Gold Michael John Carter, aka Booster Gold, first appeared in Booster Gold issue number one in February 1986. He was created by writer and artist Dan Jurgens. In the 25th century Gotham City, Michael John Carter was born into poverty. His father's gambling habits caused him to be humiliated and dismissed from school. Later on, he landed a job as a night watchman at the Metropolis Space Museum, where he observed exhibits on historical superheroes and villains, notably those from the 20th century. He took the help of a sentient robot named Skeets and stole multiple superpower devices from the museum. This included a legion of superheroes' flight ring, Brainiac 5's force field belt, and Rip Hunter's time sphere. He used the sphere to come to the 20th century and become a celebrated superhero. He's capable of time travel and has got increased durability due to his power suit. His force field belt surrounds him with an aura that protects him. He once survived a punch from Doomsday. Thanks to his force field, he's able to fly due to the flight ring he wears. He can shoot powerful energy blasts from his gauntlet to hurt and disperse his opponents. His visor devices give him enhanced hearing and vision. He was played by Donald Faison in the Legends of Tomorrow TV series. Dr. Light Kimio Tazuhoshi, aka Dr. Light, first appeared in Crisis on Infinite Earths issue number 4 and was created by writer-artist duo Marv Wolfman and George Perez. She was a brilliant and extremely motivated scientist. She was in charge of a team of astronomers who were observing the strange effects of the Crisis on Infinite Earths. She was a medical doctor, too. During the crisis, Monitor struck Hoshi with the energy of a star from Vega and gave her the power of photonics. She was chosen as Monitor's warrior in his fight against the Anti-Monitor. Under the moniker of Dr. Light, she was given the duty to protect one of the vibrational forks of the Earth during the crisis. Over the years, Dr. Light has occasionally joined the Justice League, most notably as a member of Justice League Europe in the later stages of the organization existence. She is in charge of all types of light. She has the ability to transform any light source into energy, which has helped her avoid being attacked by Starbreaker and fight the Anti-Monitor by converting sunlight into energy. She has the ability to project energy, which enables her to fire damaging laser beams and other energy bursts. She has the ability to use blinding light bursts to blind her foes. She is a bright scientist in addition to having light-based powers. She considers herself a scientist first and then a superhero. She is a well-known astronomer and the leading expert on light technology worldwide. She has the murder stuff down, but the rest, 
do you know? Huntress. Elena Bertinelli, aka Huntress, debuted in the Huntress issue number one in April 1989. She was created by Joey Cavalieri and drawn by Joe Staten. Elena was born into a well-known mafia family in Gotham City. She was abducted at the age of six and sexually assaulted by a rival mafia Don only for the purpose of torturing her father. As a result, she became a reclusive young woman. Guido and Carmela, her parents, enroll her in a boarding school where she learns all sorts of warfare while providing her with a bodyguard for security. When she was 19 years old, she witnessed her parents getting murdered by the order of the mob. Out of vengeance, she launches a quest to eradicate the mafia. Sal, her bodyguard, accompanies her during her training. Then she returns to Gotham to fulfill her quest as the Huntress. Huntress relies on her natural abilities rather than having any innate superpowers. Huntress is regarded as a top gymnast and a skilled martial artist who has mastered a number of unidentified combat arts. She is a great markswoman and an expert with a variety of weapons, including the bullwhip, darts, crossbows, and throwing knives. Helena's favored weapon is a modified crossbow. She uses a modified motorcycle as a primary source of transportation as well. She was played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead in the live-action film Birds of Prey. Atom Smasher Albert Rothstein, aka Nuclon, aka Atom Smasher, made his debut in the All-Star Squadron issue number 25 in September 1983. He was created by writer-artist duo Roy Thomas and Jerry Ordway. Albert was the godson of the Golden Age Atom Al Pratt, who was also the grandson of supervillain Cyclotron. Albert inherited from his grandpa the metahuman abilities of super strength and control over his molecular structure, enabling him to change the size and density of his body. He first fought crime as Nuclon, and then took up the moniker of Atom Atom Smasher. Atom Smasher's strength and density rise according to whatever size he selects, even though he's already extremely strong at his size of 7 feet 6 inches. He had no trouble growing to a height of 60 feet. It's unclear if there's a threshold for how tall he can get. He was powerful enough to stomp out Power Girl at a height of 60 feet. He was played by Noah Centino in the live-action movie Black Adam. Etrigan. Etrigan the Demon debuted in The Demon No. 1 in September 1972. He was created by the legendary Jack Kirby. Etrigan is originally the son of the demon Belial. He was summoned by his half-brother Merlin, who wanted to gain his secrets. Failing to do so, he bound the demon with Jason Blood, a knight in King Arthur's Camelot. Jason alternately viewed his immortality as a punishment and as a curse. Jason later became a well-known demonologist in present Gotham City. When Jason is summoned to Merlin's tomb, he finds a poem. When he says, Gone, gone the form of man, rise the demon Etrigan, he turns into the demon Etrigan. Etrigan is regarded to be one of the most formidable demons. He has extraordinary strength that has been mystically increased to the point where he can compete with superheroes like Superman, Wonder Woman, and Lobo. He has a high level of injury resistance and the ability to spew hellfire from various parts of his body primarily his mouth. He's quite adept at magic. His other abilities include heightened senses, super speed, agility, telepathy, energy blasts, and precognition, in addition to fangs and claws with mystical enhancements. He's generally brave in the face of battle and torture because of his sadomasochistic nature, which enables him to enjoy suffering as though it were delight. Big Barda. Big Barda made her first appearance in Mr. Miracle issue number 4 in October 1971. She was created by the legendary writer-artist Jack Kirby. Barda, who belongs to the New Gods race, was born almost 250 years ago on Apocalypse. At a young age, Barda was taken from her mother, Big Breeder, to be taught as a fighter at Granny Goodness's home for orphaned children. Barda was trained by Granny to one day command the Female Fury Battalion, a vicious band of female warriors. But during a raid, Barda encountered Scott Free, Darkseid's adopted son, and she immediately fell in love with him as she was attracted by his calmness. They escaped Apocalypse together and came to Earth and started working with the Justice League, eventually. Barda hails from the race of new gods who have developed godlike abilities as a result of their close vicinity to the Source. In terms of strength, Barda is nearly at par with Wonder Woman. She has a high level of damage resistance that makes her almost invulnerable. She has a similar resistance to illness and the majority of poisons. Barda is an expert swordsman and brawler because she used to be a female fury before, who was trained by none other than Granny Goodness. Barda increases her already remarkable resilience in battle by donning Apocalyptian war armor. Barda also wields a cutting-edge weapon known as the Mega Rod. This weapon can transfer her across great distances in boom tubes, lift her into the air, and unleash energy blasts. The 100 Sexiest Women in Comics list compiled by Comics Buyer's Guide placed Big Barda at number 75. 
Aztec. Uno, aka Aztec, made his first appearance in Aztec, the Ultimate Man issue number one, in August 1996. He was created by the team of Grant Morrison, Mark Miller, and N. Stephen Harris. A clandestine group known as the Q Society raises Uno from an early age to serve as the Aztec god Quetzalcoatl's champion against his rival, the god Tezcatlipoca. In order to augment Uno's supreme human mental and physical powers, a magical suit of armor is provided to him. After completing his training, he enters the US under the guise of the recently deceased Dr. Kurt Faulkner. Later, Aztec joins the Justice League, but when he discovers that one of the Q Society's enigmatic backers is the supervillain Lex Luthor, he leaves soon after. Later, he aided the League in defending Earth from the planet-eating machine, Megiddon. He was blinded while saving the planet. In the end, Aztec gave Superman the chance to avert Megiddon by sacrificing himself. Aztec is at the pinnacle of human, physical, and mental ability. He's dressed in old armor and a helmet which is powered by a four-dimensional mirror. His peak physical powers are enhanced to superhuman levels, and the helmet grants him flight, infrared and x-ray vision, intangibility, body heat camouflage, entrapment nets, plasma beams, and density manipulation. Even after he was rendered blind in his initial encounter with Megiddon, the helmet could still transmit information directly to his brain. Vi. Francisco Cisco Ramon, aka Vibe, debuted in Justice League of America Annual Issue Number no. 2 in October 1984. He was brought to life by the creative team of Jerry Conway and Chuck Patton. A short time after Aquaman dissolved the original Justice League, Cisco Ramon started his career as Vibe. Young Cisco made the decision to resign from his leadership of the neighborhood street gang Los Lobos when he learned that a new Justice League was developing in his city of Detroit. Cisco's metahuman capacity to produce potent vibratory shockwaves made him a candidate. Later, one of Professor Ivo's androids attacked Vibe and killed him. Vibe was the first Justice League member to die in the line of duty. He's been resurrected multiple times after that. Resonance, frequency, and vibration are the basis of Vibe's abilities. With the use of his abilities, he's able to produce powerful shock waves that can break steel or concrete. The waves also have an impact on the physical world through earth manipulation and seismic tremors. It has the power to rip holes in space-time and open gateways to extraterrestrial, transdimensional, and extra-dimensional worlds. Vibe is portrayed by Carlos Valdez in the hit TV series The Flash. Jay Garrick. Jason Peter J. Garrick, aka Flash, first appeared in Flash Comics issue number one in January 1940. He was created by the writer artist duo Gardner Fox and artist Harry Lampert. While taking a smoke break in his laboratory, where he had been working, he unintentionally inhales hard water vapors. It triggered his dormant metagene. He discovers that he possesses superhuman running speed and reflexes as a result. He dressed up in a red jersey with a lightning bolt on it and a stylized metal helmet with wings. The attire was modeled after representations of the Roman god Mercury. He then took up the moniker of Flash and started to fight crime. He's been a part of both JSA and JLA over time. Garrick uses the speed force to run at extraordinary speeds and has lightning quick reflexes. At first, he was only able to sprint close to the speed of sound. Due to his incredible acceleration, he could transport individuals away at super speed without injuring them. He could vibrate his body at high frequencies to become invisible, and he could vibrate his molecules to change the appearance of his features. But all of these powers grew once he met Barry Allen the second Flash, and started training with him. He was able to run at 20 times the speed of sound and also tap into the speed force. John Wesley Shipp portrays Jay Garrick in the live-action series The Flash. Animal Man Bernhard Buddy Baker debuted in Strange Adventures issue number 180 in September 1965. He was created by writer-artist duo Dave Wood and Carmine Infantino. When Buddy Baker came across a spaceship that blew up and blasted him with radiation, he acquired animal-like abilities. He used his superhuman abilities to repel alien intruders and later to battle crime. He is a vegetarian who's passionate about environmental issues, animal rights, and compassion for all living things. Buddy has the ability to duplicate any animal's traits. He accomplishes this by either concentrating on a particular animal nearby or by gaining strength from all of the animals collectively. He can even imitate extinct animals due to this. But he gains his abilities thanks to a mysterious connection to the red, also described as a morphogenetic field formed by all living things. He's demonstrated the ability to duplicate traits ranging from the playfulness of a kitten to the power of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. 
Loose Cannon. Eddie Walker debuted in Action Comics Annual Issue No. 5 in September 1993. Eddie's erratic behavior earned him the title of Loose Cannon inside the division. He was assigned a desk job after suffering severe injuries in a vehicle accident which left him crippled. He was deeply depressed and contemplated suicide, but Eddie was stopped by Maggie Sawyer and given a new assignment looking into recent murders of squatters in Suicide Slum. Lissick, an alien parasite that lives off the spinal fluid of people in Metropolis, was the murderer. Eddie was eventually ambushed by Lissick, but instead of dying, he unintentionally developed superhuman skills that allowed him to walk once more. Alongside his new abilities, Eddie worked with the Eradicator to expel Lissick from Metropolis. He took up the moniker of Loose Cannon and started fighting alien threats with the new Bloods team. He has Hulk-like traits where he changes his skin color when he gets angry. He has superhuman strength, speed, stamina, durability, and a regenerative healing property. And due to his super strong leg muscles, he's able to leap great distances. Damage. Grant Emerson, aka Damage, debuted in Damage No. 1 and was created by writer-artist duo Tom Joyner, PhD, and Bill Merriman. He's the son of Al Pratt, the original Atom. As a high school student, he'd relocated with his parents to the suburban area of Atlanta. Due to his parents' many moves as a result of their employment with the Symbolix Corporation, Grant frequently felt alienated from other children. When Grant accidentally destroys his entire school at his new school, he learns that he's a superhuman with superhuman strength and the capacity to create explosive blasts. Damage is capable of producing a power charge that gives him superhuman levels of strength, toughness, speed, and reflexes. He must spend the energy in a discharge, or else the energy in him keeps building. He once caused another Big Bang during Zero Hour event. He has all of the abilities of the heroes whose DNA he shares. Cassandra Kane. Cassandra Kane debuted in Batman number 567 in July 1999. She was created by Kelly Puckett and Damian Scott. She's the child of Lady Shiva and the assassin David Kane. She was denied speech and social interaction during her formative years in an effort to shape her into the greatest assassin in history. As a result, Cassandra grew up to become a master martial artist with a remarkable capacity for reading body language to the point of deciphering complicated ideas. However, she also acquired very few social skills, remained mute, and was illiterate. She was taught how to speak and interact socially by Barbara Gordon, and later she took on the moniker of Batgirl. She was the first to star in a Batgirl solo series. In the present time, she fights under the moniker Orphan and is a part of the Bat family in Gotham. Cassandra is not a superhuman. She was given extensive training by her father when she was a young girl, along with numerous other members of the League of Assassins, such as Bronze Tiger and Merlin the Archer and Alpha. As a result, she is a master of martial arts. Tim Drake also gave her a brief training in detective techniques. Cassandra was played by Ella J. Basco in the movie Birds of Prey. Geoforce. Prince Brian Markov, aka Geoforce, made his first appearance in The Brave and the Bold issue number 200 in July 1983. He was created by writer artist duo Mike W. Barr and Jim Aparo. Prince Brian Markov was given abilities by Dr. Helga Jace using a gadget, enabling him to put an end to an uprising led by the villainous Baron Bedlam. Together with Geoforce and two additional brand new characters, Katana and Halo, the seasoned heroes Batman, Metamorpho, and Black Lightning form a team. The heroes decide to stick together as the outsiders, with Batman serving as team captain after putting an end to the uprising. Brian's abilities are all connected to Earth in some way. In order to make an object heavier with plus gravity or lighter with null gravity, he can change the Earth's gravitational field. Like terrestrial volcanoes, he's able to project scorching lava blasts. Geoforce can fly at incredible speeds for a brief period of time by using his null gravity ability on himself, using lava blasts as propulsion. With a touch, he can transform organic stuff into an earthly mineral. Incredible superhuman strength, speed, and durability are all of his attributes. He previously used his ability to manipulate gravity to increase his own super strength, making him powerful enough to fight the pre-crisis super man. His character was portrayed by Eric Floyd in the TV series Arrow. Vixen Marie G.W. McCabe, aka Vixen, first made her appearance in Action Comics issue number 521 in July 1981. She was created by writer-artist duo Jerry Conway and Bob Oxner. Tantu, a warrior from prehistoric Ghana, requested Anansi the Spider to build a totem that would grant its owner all of the Animal Kingdom's abilities, but only if they used those abilities to defend the defenseless. Tantu used the totem to establish himself as Africa's first mythical figure. The McCabes eventually received the totem after it was later passed down through Tantu's ancestors. Marie's mother was killed by poachers, and his father was killed by her uncle as he wanted the Tantu totem. Marie later moved to New York and worked as a model. She traveled back to Africa and fought her uncle, 
and took back the tattoo totem. She took on the name of Vixen and started fighting crime. Vixen has the intrinsic capacity to make direct contact with the Earth's morphogenetic field, also known as the Red, due to her blood connection to the spider god Anasi. All life in the cosmos is bound together by a primal force known as the Red. She can access the skills of any animal that has ever been in the world through the Red. Vixen can duplicate an animal's skills and draw from its morphogenetic talent by just concentrating on them, giving her a range of superhuman abilities. Her magically augmented claws have taken blood from those who are thought to be extremely impervious to harm or nearly invulnerable. A version of her character was portrayed by Maisie Richardson Sellers in the Legends of Tomorrow TV series. Hank Haywood Henry Hank Haywood the third, aka the second Commander Steel, debuted in Justice League of America Annual Issue No. 2 in 1984. He was created by writer-artist duo Jerry Conway and Chuck Patton. Haywood III was forced to undergo the same experiment that was used to create the original Commander Steel by his grandfather. He joined the Justice League Detroit team when Aquaman had the team reorganized. He gives the group a new base of operations with the help of his grandfather, Paco Ramon. A young man from Detroit whom Hank befriends joins the group as the superhero Vibe. He has superhuman strength, durability, and agility. He's able to lift nearly 1,000 pounds. His skeleton is made of a very strong steel alloy. Additionally, he has an electronic hearing enhancement that allows him to hear sounds up to half a mile away. Although the limit of his strength is unknown, he was strong enough to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat with his grandfather, Commander Steel. Oh, you wanna go? <laughs> Bronze Tiger Benjamin Ben Turner, aka Bronze Tiger, debuted in Richard Dragon, Kung Fu Fighter, issue number one, in May 1975. He was created by Dennis O'Neill and Jim Berry. Ben is from a black area in Central City that belonged to the upper middle class. When he was only 10 years old, he witnessed a burglar savagely beating his parents and killed the intruder with a kitchen knife. Turner resorted to martial arts in an effort to contain the violence in him. He then traveled east and trained under Osensei, along with Richard Dragon. On completion of the training, he was recruited by Barney Ling to serve as a member of the organization called Good. Bronze Tiger is a skilled martial artist with lightning-quick reflexes who was trained under many of the DC Universe's greatest martial arts teachers, including Kuriji, Osensei, and Sensei. He's said to have a defense for every martial arts style. In addition, Bronze Tiger is skilled at controlling his own chi, which he uses to hasten the process of healing. He is also regarded as a successful field leader for the Suicide Squad, who gathers resources around him and makes the most of them. Through the use of a magical talisman that can provide him improved physical ability at the risk of burning a portion of his own soul, he's able to change into his tiger-like form. Thunderbolt Thunderbolt debuted in a Flash Comics issue number one in January 1940. He was created by writer-artist duo John Wentworth and Stan Ashmeyer. Thunderbolt is a fifth-dimensional genie that lived in a pen that Johnny Thunder was given on his birthday. At that time, the villainous Bardnesians were planning world conquest. Johnny Thunder learned about Thunderbolt and the Sayu invoking word. He called out the words and with the help of Superman, he followed the plans of the Bardnesians. Due to Alzheimer's disease, Johnny lost the track of the magical pen. It eventually ended up with an African an American boy named Jaquine Williams, who later takes up the name Jaquim Thunder to fight crime. Johnny could summon the Thunderbolt Jinn with his magic words and make him follow his orders to the last letter. He is endowed with all the abilities of a genie from the fifth dimension, including the capacity to change reality to an infinitesimally wide extent. Lionheart Richard Plant, aka Lionheart, debuted in Justice League International Annual Issue No. 4 in August 1993. He was created by writer-artist duo Gerard Jones and Mike Parabek. Richard was a former Union dock worker and was the perfect candidate to defend England as a government agent because of his bravery and deep loyalty to his own United Kingdom. As he was a direct descendant of King Richard I, he called himself Lionheart, after his namesake while armed with a blazing energy sword and armor. During the events of Blood Lines, he made his debut appearance, teaming up with Justice League International to stop multiple extraterrestrial parasites from ravaging London and killing defenseless Londoners. Despite being bitten by one of the aliens, Praetor, he managed to survive the attack and, over the years, joined forces with various iterations of the Justice League. Although he's not superhuman like the other League members, he has the physical agility of an acrobat. He's from the bloodline of the Knights, and he uses his energy sword effectively in his fights against his opponents. The Ray the Ray is the name taken up by four characters in DC Comics Universe. The first Ray was Langford Happy Terrell, who debuted in Smash Comics issue number 14 in September 1940 and was created by Lou Fine. When Lightning and Sunshine were simultaneously exposed to Langford Happy Terrell, he grew larger and developed energy-based superpowers. He joined the Freedom Fighters and fought in World War I. 
The second Ray, Ray Terrell, was the son of Happy. When he was 18, he took control of his powers and took on the mantle of Ray to serve and protect. The third Ray, Stan Silver, appeared when the team Freedom Fighters was reassembled. When reporting a story as a foreign journalist for the Washington Sun, Silver was exposed to radiation from the high atmosphere, which gave him control over different types of light. The fourth and current Ray was lifeguard Lucian Gates, a Korean-American from San Diego County. He was struck by a particle beam from a solar energy cannon ordered by an undis closed government entity. He took on the moniker of Ray after that. All of the Rays have similar powers. The ability to absorb, store, and morph pure light allows them to fly and produce dazzling bright and potent bursts of light. They have the ability to control electricity and magnetism. The Terrells had the ability to manipulate and control external light in order to produce deceptions, even solid light structures, as well as making themselves invisible. Stan Silver reportedly has the ability to transform his body into a living laser light. Fire. Beatrice Bonilla da Costa, aka Fire, made her first appearance in Super Friends issue number 25 in October 1979. She was created by writer artist duo E. Nelson Bridwell and Ramona Fraden. Her career as a model, showgirl, and stage performer led her to work as a top secret operative for the Brazilian government's intelligence agency. Beatrice was trapped in a pyroplasmic explosion on one of her missions, giving her the ability to exhale an 8 inch burst of fire. She first assumed the persona of the Green Fury before switching to the Green Flame. She joined the Global Guardians crew before moving on to JL International, where she adopted the alias Fire. In the beginning, Beatrice could only breathe a jet of Green Flame out of her mouth due to the pyroplasm saturating her body. Later, she had the ability to fully transform into a Green Plasma being, in which she could fly and unleash terrible blasts. She was impervious to solid items passing fully through her without harm. Ice. Tora Olofsdottir, aka Ice, made her first appearance in Justice League International issue number 12 in April 1988. She was made by the creative team of Keith Giffen, J.M. Dumatice, and Kevin Maguire. Tora's grandfather was the leader of the Isbigd, a minor Romani Folkett cult. In order to prevent her grandfather from tracking her down and compelling her to use her power to maintain control over the other big residents, Tora was hidden. She was trained to maintain her composure and master her metahuman ability to produce and manipulate ice. But Tora's grandfather eventually found his family. She lost control while fighting them and killed several people, including her own father. Tora's shy personality was brought on by this incident, which she suppressed as a result of the dissociative trauma connected to the unintentional murder. Honoring her father's dying wish, she refrained from interfering forcefully with others and always remained calm. In addition to being a skilled hand-to-hand -hand fighter, Ice can project small amounts of ice and snow via her hands in order to take down an adversary. She has the ability to make ice platforms for skating. She's also able to control the weather to some extent and create small storms. Steel. John Henry Irons, aka Steel, debuted in the Adventures of Superman issue number 500 in June 1993. He was created by the writer artist duo Louise Simonson and artist John Bogdanov. Dr. John Henry Irons was a top notch weapons engineer at Amatech Industries. He was horrified when the BG 60, a potent man portable energy cannon he'd invented, got into the wrong hands and was used to slaughter innocent people. John eventually arrived in Metropolis after faking his death. He was saved by Superman during a construction accident where he advised John to live a life worth saving. When Doomsday attacked Metropolis and killed Superman, Irons constructed and wore a powerful armor suit in honor of Superman to stop Doomsday. Armed with new armaments and wielding a sledgehammer, he took on the mantle of steel and started his journey as a superhero with Superman's emblem on his chest. John is a gifted athlete who frequently demonstrates a high level of strength. He's a brilliant engineer and has a gifted mind. He also has powered armor that gives him the ability to fly and improved strength and and endurance. Over the course of his career, Steel frequently changed his costume and updating new tech. He could grow himself to enormous proportions and had godlike power and durability while wearing the Entropy Aegis. He could also fly thanks to his energy wings, freely traverse time and space, and unleash energy blasts that would break a target down to shreds. He became quite violent nevertheless, and his soul was gradually erased by the Aegis. So he denounced the Aegis and got back to his usual armor. The character was played by Shaquille O'Neal in the 1997 film Still. Gypsy. 
Cynthia Cindy Reynolds, aka Gypsy, debuted in Justice League of America Annual Issue Number 2. She was created by writer Jerry Conway and artist Chuck Patton. She was born to Edward and June Reynolds, who led tranquil suburban lives. As a child, Cindy was a knowledgeable and skilled barefooter. Soon after the birth of Cindy's brother, Edward and June got into a disagreement. Cindy experienced abuse while trying to keep her parents together. She purchased a bus ticket to Detroit and fled from home when her illusion powers began to show at the age of 14. She shielded herself from the common perils of city life by using her chameleon and illusion casting abilities. When Cindy reached adulthood, she took on the name Gypsy. Gypsy's main ability is illusion casting, which she uses to blend into her surroundings and essentially disappear. She can adjust to rapidly shifting environments without losing the illusion. She has the ability to conceal both herself and anyone nearby. Gypsy's abilities have advanced to the point where she can now hide not only a moving vehicle, but also its occupants. Gypsy also possesses some astral projection and limited precognition. Gypsy is also a master of close quarters warfare and a skilled acrobat as well. Plastic Man Patrick Eel O'Brien, aka Plastic Man, first appeared in Police Comics issue number one in August 1941, published by Quality Comics. He was created by Jack Cole. DC Comics acquired the character in 1956 when Quality Comics shut down. Since then, Plastic Man has been one of the main comic superheroes of the DC universe. After being shot and exposed to an unknown chemical, Eel O'Brien was abandoned by his criminal group. As his new abilities began to manifest, he wandered the streets, terrifying bystanders and drawing the attention of the police and National Guard as a potentially deadly monster. He contemplated suicide, but was stopped by Woozy Winks, a former mental patient. They both planned on how to capitalize O'Brien's powers. They couldn't decide whether it would be crime or crime fighting. Ultimately, they flipped a coin and went crime fighting. They landed on a series of misadventures and eventually, O'Brien was absorbed as a Justice League member. O'Brien always dwells in a fluid state. His molecular structure is entirely under his control. His body and limbs can be stretched to superhuman lengths and sizes. There's no threshold on how much he can stretch. He can mimic anyone else's appearance as well as mimic inanimate objects like pistols, dresses, boxes, etc. He's not affected by telepathy as his mind is inorganic. He is a master sleuth, a brilliant thief, and one of the smartest covert operatives. Rocket Red Rocket Red first appeared in Green Lantern Corps issue number 208 in January 1987. The Reds were created by Steve Englehart and Joe Statton. Any member of the Rocket Red Brigade is referred to as a Rocket Red. Only three distinct individuals were called Rocket Red in singular, as they were Justice League members. They are the original Rocket Red number 7, Dmitry Pushkin, aka Rocket Red number 4, and Gavril Ivanovich, aka Rocket Red. When Rocket Red number 7 was discovered to be a Manhunter robot, Dmitry took over the mantle as a member of Justice League International. In 2010, Gavril was shown persuading the Rocket Reds in a battle against the OMAC androids of Maxwell Lord. He continues to support the ancient communist cause and opposes the contemporary Rocket Red Brigade's capitalist principles. Gavril remains a member of JL International till date. Green Lantern Kilowog originally developed the Rocket Reds for the Soviet Union and the Rocket Red Brigade. They were normal people who had undergone forced evolution and wore war armor. They proudly guarded the USSR. All the Rocket Reds have super strength and invulnerability. They can fly propelled by rockets. They can also project strong energy blasts and have mecha empathy, the capacity to perceive and command computers and machines. Black Shazam! Crap! Black Adam, Teth Adam. Black Adam originally appeared in Fawcett Comics in 1945. DC took over the character and he was reintroduced in The Power of Shazam graphic novel in 1994. It was written and drawn by Jerry Ordway. Teth Adam, the son of Pharaoh Ramesses II, was born in Egypt in 111279 BC. The wizard Shazam was impressed by Teth Adam's benevolent actions and granted him the powers of seven gods at the utterance of the word Shazam. He was one true champion of Egypt but was corrupt by Blaze, the evil daughter of Shazam. He was made to believe that he was born to rule Egypt. Corrupted, he committed acts of murder and treason. Eventually, he was defeated and killed and entombed by Shazam. His body was later retrieved by his descendant Theo Adam, 
who used his powers to turn to Black Adam and wreak havoc on the world. Theo was defeated by Billy Batson's Shazam. Later, the actual Black Adam appeared, reformed. He stood trial and was proven innocent. He then joined the Justice Society of America and worked alongside them as a hero. When Teth Adam speaks the magic word Shazam, he draws power from seven gods. The stamina of Shu, the swiftness of Heru, the strength of Amon, the wisdom of Zahuti, the power of Adon, and the courage of Mehen. Black Adam can withstand and sustain the majority of forms of extremely physical assault thanks to Shu's practically limitless stamina. He also doesn't need to breathe, eat, or sleep in order to survive in space. He can travel in orbit of speeds close to the speed of light by channeling the superhuman speed of Horus. He is capable of traveling at translight speeds in space. Black Adam draws his incredible super strength from Amon. He can effortlessly bend steel, smash through walls, clap his hands to create strong shock waves, and lift heavy objects. Black Adam possesses a tremendous amount of scholastic knowledge thanks to Zahuti's wisdom. Black Adam can fly thanks to Adam's power, which also powers the lightning power transformation of Adam. It improves Adam's already superhuman physical prowess further and offers magical defense against an enormous number of magic spells and attacks. Black Adam has superhuman levels of inner strength, willpower, discipline, and resolution thanks to Mehen's courage. Fan favorite actor Dwayne Johnson portrays Black Adam in the live action movie. General Glory The moniker of General Glory has been taken up by two people till date. Glory had exaggerated patriotic beliefs and a psychic named Ernie the Battling Boy, reminiscent of Bucky. The character was primarily employed by writers as a spoof of Marvel's Captain America. The first General Glory, Joseph Jones, debuted in Justice League International No. 46 and was created by Keith Giffen and J.M. de Mathias. He was a soldier who received special powers from Lady Liberty during World War II. He turned to General Glory on uttering the words, Lady of Liberty, hear my plea, for the land of the brave and home of the free. Jones's human self aged with time. During one of his transformations back to his normal self, he had a cardiac arrest. He shared a room with an injured cop named Donovan Wallace, whom he told stories of Glory. When Jones passed away, he granted all of his powers to Donovan, making him the new General Glory. Only when he was acting as General Glory, Jones had mystically boosted strength and durability. Otherwise, he was a weak 80-year-old man. In contrast to the first, Donovan's General Glory displayed various new abilities and weapons. He had golden bird wings that allowed him to fly, as well as a sharp throwing star that would come back to him once released. Light Ray Light Ray, aka Solis, was created by the legendary Jack Kirby and debuted in New Gods issue number 1 in February 1971. Light Ray is a vivacious new god and is known as the shining star of New Genesis. Light Ray is upbeat and positive and favors negotiation over conflict as a means of problem solving. He is completely opposite of his somber friend Orion. While Orion always looks forward to a fight, Light Ray avoids enemies by taking advantage of his light speed. Light Ray is immortal and endowed with superhuman strength strength, stamina, and reflexes, like all the other new gods. He can produce and project solar energy and travel at the speed of light or even faster. He has the ability to concentrate solar energy into laser-like beams of light. He also has the ability to create a massive solar or nova explosion by using all of his power. He wears a mother box, one of the omnipotent living computers, in his headpiece. Crimson Fox The Crimson Fox moniker was shared by two twin sisters, Vivian and Constant Daramis, in order to fight crime. They made their debut in Justice League Europe issue number 6 and were created by writer-artist duo Keith Giffen and Bart Sears. Vivian and Constance, who are identical twins, share the role of Crimson Fox to give each of them a chance at a regular life. In order for one of them to act as a Crimson Fox while the other attended professional events, they faked Constance's death. Compared to her sister, Vivian has always been shown to be more easygoing and extroverted. She was much more excited about their superhero lives. Eventually, both of them fell in love with Metamorpho. The Crimson Fox twins could generate pheromones that caused tremendous sexual desire in males. They had superhuman speed and agility. They had deadly steel talons attached to their gloves. After Pointer killed Vivian, Constance retreated into her animal nature and gained increased senses after Vivian passed away. Eventually, she was also killed by the daughter of the supervillain, Mist. Our Man 
Matthew Tyler, aka Our Man, debuted in JLA issue number 12 in November 1997. He was created by the writer artist duo Grant Morrison and Howard Porter. Tyler Kimo Robotics created the android known as the Our Man in the year 853. He has all of the emotions and personal frailties that a typical human has. The new god Metron, who wanted to use the android as his replacement and apprentice, initially ordered its creation. The first Our Man, Rex Tyler, acted as the android's biological model and worked on its creation in the future. He possesses superhuman strength, stamina, and speed, comparable to that of a Miraclo user. He's easily capable of multiplying and repairing himself. Rex Tyler's genetic material is encoded in his program, allowing him access to all of Rex's memories. He had total control over time with the help of his Warlogog. He has the ability to tap into an hour of power, a period of time during which he possesses control over time itself. With this power, he's able to jump between picoseconds and travel through time. Also, during this hour, he can utilize his own time vision to view someone's past, present, and age. He can make people and things younger, slow someone down till they're essentially frozen, build time portals, and share power with other people. Powerhouse Naomi McDuffie, aka Powerhouse, debuted in Naomi issue number one in March 2019. She was created by writers Brian Michael Bendis and David F. Walker, and artist Jamal Campbell. In a parallel dimension in the DC multiverse, the thinning of the ozone layer exposes the planet's surface to a sort of radioactive energy giving godlike abilities to 29 people from all over the world. Naomi was the daughter of two such metahumans. Later, a criminal meta named Zumbado from the original 29 tried to kill Naomi. Her parents transferred her to the main DC universe designated Earth Zero, but were killed in the process. An ex-soldier from Ran Planet, George McDuffie, adopts her on this Earth. Before informing Naomi about her arrival on Earth Zero, Greg shared his own history. He gave Naomi a device, which she brought to this Earth upon arrival. That device had a message from her biological mother, and it activated her superpowers. Naomi went into battle with Zumbado and defeated him. She then traveled to Metropolis, where she met Batman and Superman and then joined the Young Justice team. Naomi's body is filled to the brim with an unidentified form of energy. She is capable of firing strong energy blasts. She can fly and is extremely powerful and resilient because of her energy. She can also make a black and gold outfit with the energy to shield her body. Casey Walfall portrayed Naomi in the live-action TV series of the same name. Comes to ping pong. Gleek, the space monkey. Gleek made his first appearance in the animated TV series The All New Super Friends Hour on September the 10th, 1977. He later appeared in the spin-offs of the animated series as well. He was voiced by Michael Bell. He is the Wonder Twins Zan and Janus pet monkey. He's an alien and is blue in color. Geek frequently serves as the show's comic relief because of his propensity for mischief. Episodes of the Super Friends featuring Geek frequently end with a joke involving him. In the Interplanetary Carnival, where the Wonder Twins were raised, Gleek used to be the sidekick of a clown. He has been a friend to the twins ever since. Stretchable and tensile, Gleek's tail has been demonstrated to have the strength to lift up a full-grown man. Brilliantly intelligent, Gleek can understand spoken English with ease. He uses sign language and can even talk to communicate. When the Wonder Twins need to travel, Jaina morphs into an eagle and Zan into water. Gleek then creates a bucket to carry Zan while Jaina carries the two of them. Also a fan of Earth bananas, Gleek once packed an additional suitcase of them for a trip to their home planet Exor, where there are no bananas. When the Wonder Twins are out of reach, his body can serve as a conduit for their powers to be activated. Tasmanian Devil Hugh Dawkins, aka Tasmanian Devil, made his first appearance in Super Friends issue number 7 in October 1977. He was created by the writer-artist duo E. Nelson Bridwell and Ramona Fraden. Hugh's mother was a weird Tasmanian Devil who raised him in a cult. The cult sold his soul to the Tasmanian Devil. In return, they gifted him a Tasmanian Devil amulet and injected him with radioactive Tasmanian Devil musk from an alien race of Tasmanian Devils. All these combined activated Hugh's metagene. He was able to transform himself into a Tasmanian devil with werewolf-like features and enormous size while holding on to his high intelligence. Hugh is a pacifist, but the Tasmanian devil, his alter ego, is vicious and murderous. Hugh assisted in constructing the Justice League embassy after an alien invasion had destroyed it. Since then, he's been officially affiliated as a Justice League member. In his Tasmanian devil form, he's bestowed with savage strength, regenerative healing factor, and razor-sharp claws and fangs. He's able to move at super speed and even dodge bullets, irrespective of his enormous size. Now wait a minute, someone's gonna get hurt. 
Yeah, you! Maxima. Maxima was a moody, fickle-minded warrior queen from the planet Almorak. She was created by writer Roger Stern and the late great artist George Perez and made her first appearance in Action Comics number 645 in September 1989. A warrior queen, she denied getting married to her betrothed, Ultra, and went on a quest from planet to planet to find a suitable mate for herself. Sazu, her loyal servant, came to Earth to aid her quest. She put on Maxima's appearance and tried to persuade Superman to be her mate, but she was imprisoned. The real Maxima appeared on Earth in her full might to free Sazu. Here she came face to face with Superman, this godlike being who was humbled down by his time on Earth. She wanted to tap into the full potential of Superman. Since Almorakians and Kryptonians were genetically very alike, she wanted Superman to be her mate and wanted to bear his child. As a descendant of the Blood Royale of Almorak, Maxima possesses a wide range of powerful psychic abilities. These abilities result from years of gene treatment and selective breeding. A Psychic abilities include hypnotic mind control and suggestions, as well as moving objects with telekinesis. Maxima can infinitely grow her strength, outpacing those in her tier. She's demonstrated her ability to keep up with other speedsters like the Flash and the ability to move at speeds easily exceeding the speed of light. Her optical beams have the power to harm even Superman. She can teleport both herself and other people over great distances, even to and from other worlds. She poses a potential threat to the whole Justice League due to her wide range of skills and talents. Bloodwind Bloodwind made his first appearance in Justice League America issue 61 in April 1992. He was created by writer-artist Jan Jurgens. Jacob Whitney, a cruel and violent plantation owner, owned a group of African-American slaves. Bloodwind was a scion of one of those slaves. These slaves carried out an antiquated ritual to produce a supernatural blood gem that they used to murder Whitney. The descendants of the slaves received the blood gem. Unbeknownst to them, the gem also housed a microscopic dimension where Jacob Whitney his spirit had taken the form of the demon Rot. This world gave the gem's possessor incredible physical abilities. As each wearer's dark side was absorbed by the gem over time, Rot got stronger. Rot eventually pulled Bloodwind into the gem and imprisoned him. The Martian Manhunter was compelled to wear the gem and pretend to be Bloodwind. The Manhunter rejoined the Justice League under the guise of Bloodwind. While being mind-controlled by Rot, he looked for a power source that would allow Rot to break out from his micro-world. The Justice League helped Bloodwind break free and rescued Martian Manhunter as well. After that, he stayed with the Justice League as one of the members. The prime source of Bloodwind's power is the blood gem on his chest. He gains the ability to fly, shoot optic blasts, and has superhuman strength and durability with the help of that gem. In a battle with the energy-draining Starbreaker, the villain was astounded by Bloodwind's might, declaring it to surpass even Superman's. Bloodwind is a skilled necromancer as well. He can call upon the dead spirits, which endow him with life force and enhanced strength. In a manner akin to Ghost Rider's penance stare, he possesses the ability to sense the location of deaths and to make murderers feel the suffering of their victims. In addition to that, he has the the powers of invisibility, telepathy, and illusion casting at his disposal. That's all folks, that concludes our list of superheroes who have ever worked with the Justice League. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Keep liking, sharing, and subscribing for more videos. Until we meet again, same bat time, same bat channel. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks everyone.